vicious system that trod on the human dignity of others, treating them as if they were rubbish. We realized you cannot make something which is essentially not good better. You cannot improve it. You've got to make a paradigm shift. It was just unbelievable. I mean, that it's happened. This thing that we have been praying for, struggling for all these many, many years. Hey, it's happened. It's happened. Here he's, he's, he's walking out. He's walking out of the jail. A brand new state president out of the box, Nelson Mandela. I felt that a new South Africa was born, which offered hope to all its people. And I no longer had the feelings of apprehension. I emphasized in my evidence uh, on more than one occasion that I have never been part of any decision which authorized assassination, cold-blooded murder. This is a moral universe. Every single person has to live with themselves. And brother, I tell you, that can be pretty tough. De fleste historiske begivenheder er startet med et menneske, der har truffet et valg. Et menneske, der på den måde har været med til at forme verden, som vi kender den i dag. Men hvorfor kom netop disse mennesker til at skabe historie, og hvordan træffede de deres mest afgørende beslutninger? Afslutningen på apartheid i Sydafrika har to ansigter, et sort og et hvidt. F.W. de Klerk var præsidenten, der opgav magten og lagde et brutalt regime i graven, Desmond Tutu var præsten, der påtog sig at finde sandheden om fortidens grusomheder. På den måde er de to mænds skæbne uløsligt flettet sammen med Sydafrikas. Her er deres historie. Cape Town i Sydafrika. I dag en blomstrende by med et behageligt klima, der tiltrækker turister fra hele verden. Men for ikke ret længe siden en by, der var scene for dramatiske begivenheder, som hele verden fulgte i spænding. Det var dengang Sydafrika var underlagt det mest rendyrkede og brutale racestyre, verden har set siden Hitler-Tyskland, nemlig apartheid. Under apartheid gjorde det hvide styre kort proces med sine politiske modstandere. Nelson Mandela sad 27 år i fængsel, andre forsvandt sporløst. Men der var en mand, som styret ikke kunne lukke munden på. Det var ærkebiskop Desmond Tutu. Han blev en håbets stemme for de sorte i en tid, hvor deres politiske ledere sad i fængsel. Did you ever consider the personal risks to yourself and to your family? In a sense, I had a free choice but in another sense i didn't god grabbed me by the you know the scruff of my neck i did what i had to do because there was i couldn't do otherwise uh, i was a leader by default as you say the leaders were away uh, and uh, 
yeah, you, you realized, I mean, that in a struggle, they, they were, there were going to be casualties. Uh, and I used to say, God, if I'm doing your work, you jolly well are going to have to protect me. Sydafrika var et samfund skarpt opdelt i sort og hvidt. Var man sort, havde man stort set ingen rettigheder. Man var i myndighedernes vold. Var man hvid, var man en del af den lille minoritet, der bestemte alt. I'm not justifying the wrongs of apartheid, but what, what one should understand, if you really want to understand South Africa, is that we wanted to build a little Europe, where we would have a country and govern ourselves where the Zulus would have a country and govern themselves, and the Sutus, and the Vendas, and the Tosas, and all nine black indigenous nations with their different languages. Afslutningen på apartheid har to ansigter, et sort og et hvidt. Frederik Wilhelm de Klerk blev manden, der afsluttede det hvide terrorregime og dermed opgav magten. Desmond Tutu påtog sig at rydde op, at finde sandheden om årtiers politisk undertrykkelse, tortur og drab. Sammen kom de til at ændre Sydafrikas historie for altid. How did the, uh, the laws of the apartheid system affect you in your everyday life? You couldn't go wherever you wished. You couldn't attend any school you wanted. You couldn't live wherever you, you chose to live. And you couldn't vote. Can you imagine, I mean, that uh, a Nelson Mandela has to wait until he's 76? So, Because you did not have the vote, you did not have political power, they, they didn't need to consult you. Reporting on the uh, apartheid system, the media uh, tended to focus on specific cases of human rights violations, the murders, the disappearances. But what were, in your opinion, the positive sides of apartheid? Uh, the National Party regime, let me put it like that went out of its way to develop, to create opportunities. When in 1948 the National Party came into uh, power, there was really no government education, government-sponsored education for blacks. It was in the hand of the churches. 25, 30 years later, every child in South Africa went to a school at the age of seven. Squatter town were cleaned up and better housing were provided. Medical services were dramatically improved. New universities were established under apartheid. If you got injured uh, and you're a black person and the, and the ambulance came along and it was an ambulance for white people, it couldn't take you. Even if it was quite critical that you should get to the hospital quickly. You could not be taken in that ambulance because it was reserved for white people. If you should put it in just a few words, how did all this, this everyday evil of the apartheid system, how did that make you feel as a human being? Well, you got to the point where you began to wonder whether you were really as human as other people. See, they called us many things. They called us natives. Uh, uh, like, I mean, they could have signs that say, natives and dogs not allowed. And, and that eroded your self-esteem. Uh, and I think it is the most blasphemous aspect of racial uh, injustice that it can make a child of God doubt that 